Hey everyone and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video. We're going to go over 10 items that sold week in our charity eBay store. And we're going to have a couple of deep dives at the end of this video. So you want to stay tuned and watch the whole entire video. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn how to earn more on eBay, definitely go down there and consider clicking the subscribe button. And if you want to hit the bell for notifications to get a notifi notification every time I go live or there's a new video. And if anything, definitely just go down there and click the like button if you enjoy these videos. That helps the algorithm out and it provides, you know, some little kick to, to the YouTube algorithm and it keeps me alive in the game and I definitely appreciate all your support. Now, I had a question yesterday whether or not you guys want to see what sold videos every day or every two to three days and it looks like the every day is inching out so I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to this poll uh, definitely go down there and sound off if you want to leave a comment let me know if you want to see what sold videos every day or if you don't mind them every two to three days I really appreciate it so let's get right into what sold on eBay uh, first up we have this row Yellow lizard, 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 yellow lizard designer handbag. This is an amazing piece here. Uh, we actually did take a best offer for 200 on this. We had this as listed as high as like 1300 uh, for like a month or two, and there was really no offers, uh, no one sending questions, anything like that. So you know, we took uh, the best offer of two hundred dollars on this piece these things retail brand new anywhere between you know twelve hundred to thirty five hundred dollars depending on size we've talked about the row before it is definitely a brand to look out for as we can see here uh, that's where the logo is right there the brass in the middle now i think i took a close-up of that uh, not really a great photo but as you can see the row made in italy i don't know if it's actually real lizard but it could be and uh, I don't know if it's snake skin I guess it would if it was snake skin they would call these but uh, these are called by the company lizard skin or lizard I didn't even say lizard skin it just says lizard so I don't know if it's fake or not but as you can see here it's got really good quality even the ends are covered in some sort of uh, rubbery plastic so that you know th there's not too much wear there it came with a little credit card sleeve and this is actually a really nice handbag and you know the other than just basically some of the hardware having some slight scratching for the most part the print was really nice but you know for the main thing is to look out for these this is definitely an estate sale item i really highly doubt you're going to come across this stuff at a goodwill or a garage sale so if you're at an estate sale keep an eye out for the row it is definitely a an estate sale item uh, next up, we have this Fuji camera. This is an underwater camera. This is an HD-M. And for those who don't know, if you're new to the camera business, basically somewhere on the camera is going to have a brand name, which is Fuji. And it's going to have a model number, which in this case is HD-M. Uh, it's a little weird. And usually uh, they'll have lenses on the camera this happens to be a fixed lens that's on the camera you cannot change this lens it doesn't even have um you know brackets or any kind of hardware to actually screw on another lens uh, this is a fixed lens at 2.8 38 millimeter and so uh you know definitely if you ever come across these older film cameras pop them open look at the backs Make sure there's no corrosion in the battery compartments, as we can see here. I didn't take a photo of that. Uh, this is untested. We did sell this untested. This did sell for $24.99, and it is an underwater camera, 35 millimeter. And like I said, the most important thing is knowing the brand and the style number or the actual model number. And those are cameras are very easy easy to look up. They're harder to test, especially if they're film cameras. So uh, I highly suggest somewhere in your photos, if you cannot test them, which actually costs a pretty good amount of money to actually buy the film, develop the film. Sometimes it's not worth it. If you have an $800 camera, it might be worth taking all that extra time to make sure if it works. But if you have like a, a camera that's under 50 bucks, 75 bucks, it's not even worth your time to be honest. So 
Uh, and that's from someone who's been selling cameras for over 20 years. And so uh, I'm just telling you, it's just easier just to sell them as is if they're untested. You know, if, if they come back, you know, you might get some returns. You know, if, luckily for me, um, I've never had a camera return. I'm going to knock on wood right now. And if you haven't, you definitely go and <laughs> knock on some wood right now. And uh, like I said, uh, that's pretty much that when it comes to cameras. Uh, next up is this La Crusade. This is a cast iron Moroccan style. Was it ta tagging? Tinge? I don't know what this is. I don't even know how what you're supposed to cook in this thing. I guess, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's like a, a ceramic kind of funnel top thing here. And uh, anyways, the main point is La Crusade is a brand. Look at this is what the logo looks like. Um, Tangine, I guess it is. La Crusade is a brand you sh should buy anytime you see it, especially if the price is right. Uh, this is definitely stuff you can find in a garage sale, some thrift stores, estate sales. Look for in the kitchen for this kind of stuff. You know, they're Dutch ovens and they, they sell like pots. And uh, I don't think they do pans. They probably do pans, but they're mostly mo known for their crock pots. You know, the, the ones that are like oven crock pots, not like ones that you plug in. Uh, certain ones of those go for hundreds of dollars. So just keep an eye out for this. This is a Bolo brand for sure. Uh, La Crusade, definitely look out for this. This is very high-end cookware. Anytime you see this stuff at a garage sale or an estate sale and the price is right, buy it especially if it's in good condition because you will make money off this brand and uh we did take a best offer on this one i think we took a best offer for like 85 something around that around that neighborhood you know we did list this as high as uh 149.99 and uh you know we knew we weren't going to get 149.99 but it's good just to kind of price up because you never know who's going to buy it at that price and you can always bring the price down and that's the high low theory and those that have been watching the channel you know know about the high low theory and pretty much every seller has their own kind of method of what they do but you know the high low theory is pretty much uh, done by you know tons of sellers so definitely look out for this brand uh, next up we have the CSI New York this is a complete for Susan DVD sealed this sold for five dollars plus five dollars media mail you can send DVDs media mail by the way so if you want to save some money on these box sets that could be very heavy, you might not know that. For those that don't know, media mail is basically uh, records, DVDs, uh, anything media. You know, magazines don't count because they have advertising in them. And so just, uh, you know, records, like I said, uh, some certain media print and stuff like that could sell. Uh, it's actually surprising to me the amount of stuff I buy that shouldn't be in media mail that I get that has been shipped media mail. So, you know, you could get dinged if the if the post office decides to open it and look because they do do that from side, time to time. They will inspect packages. And they used to do it a lot in the late 90s and the early 2000s. They used to do it all the time. And uh, I think with the current volume of stuff that's coming and going, I really don't think they, they care too much anymore. But I know if you try to send video games or something like that, you could possibly get dinged. So... Uh, DVDs and laser discs and cassettes and CDs they're all fair game from media mail so definitely use that if you're not using media mail and that's the only reason why I'm showing you this is just to just talk about media mail for for a second you guys might not know and uh, uh, DVDs are still selling not like they used to but look out for sealed box sets especially if you can get them for like a dollar or less uh, next up we have this sterling silver green lantern ring this is a vintage ring and uh, like I said, we took a best offer for, I think, $35 on this. It does say sterling on the back. So if you do see, like, a pile of rings at a garage sale, and they might, you know, some of them might think this is just regular metal, uh, look inside the ring, see if it's marked sterling or 928 or anything like that. Uh, any kind of markings usually will tell you that it's something to be, you know, to double check. And, you know, there's this stuff is out there especially at even even uh, Goodwills and things sometimes we'll miss this kind of stuff. So it was a cool ring. It was a vintage ring. I thought we would get a lot more than $35 for this, but we're happy with $35, especially with this ring. And it has the comic book kind of... Uh, this is a Green Lantern, for those that don't know. Green Lantern is a DC comic character who wears this ring. And I'm not sure exactly 
what kind of powers the ring holds but you know it's basically like a comic it's not just a fashion jewelry thing it's more like a comic book uh, themed item also so someone who is a Green Lantern fan basically I'm pretty sure almost uh, with any certainty bought this unless someone bought this just purely for uh, the silver content but you know that is also a thing that could definitely be uh, I highly suggest taking a photo of it on a scale if you have any kind of solid silver or solid jewelry um, like gold it's definitely a must do in your photos so if you don't have one of these scales these things cost like 10 to 20 dollars if you don't have one of these and you're a full-time reseller or you're thinking about being serious about reselling invest a few dollars in one of these scales put them in your photos and it's a tax write-off also because it's part of your business so that's another whole thing too next up we have this record a lot these are 45s and 78 uh, whoever got this actually got a really good deal and we get a ton of records in uh, to the shop and it's crazy the amount of records we get in and, and for the most part you know uh, we've had some pretty good records come in but for the most part 95 percent of the time they're junk now this is a mystery lot i didn't go through every single one of these to see like oh is it you know like is there you know a, a really rare one in here i didn't really go through it that well but you know there could be stuff in there so what i'm saying is you know check out our link below this is a someone got this really great deal of records for twenty dollars and so there's lots of great deals in our shop and so definitely go and look out and also look out for these older records man some of these go for hundreds of dollars and uh, i did thumb through these real quick you know before i went to sell these in a lot and i didn't see anything that really stuck out and i did look up a couple and um, to me they were just all regular stuff but someone got a good deal with this and you know there's lots of online arbitrage deals to be made in our charity shop so definitely go and check that out uh, next up we have this margo de taxico mexico sterling silver 925 and i'm trying to think uh, what was agate i was like i was trying to think like what stone was this uh the main thing i'm trying to say in this video is basically look on the back of all jewelry sometimes they'll have stamps like this and uh you definitely want to look up some of these some of the native american jewelry will have an artist name and you can just basically go to google and search native american marks jewelry marks and there's uh, a couple databases that i use that are really really cool and they're alphabetical order so you know they're easily to look up but this is basically from mexico um and so i've seen similar items sell for you know around the same price so that's what we price this at 249 dollars um, I want to say we took a best offer for 185 for this. And if you don't have like a piece of felt, I, I really think this um, black felt that I have, this board, it's got black felt and it's just a board, really shows the silver jewelry very well against the black background. It really pops. So if you're thinking about like photography, and I should have actually, you see the little dust particles, I usually will take a a lint roller to that or some tape or something to get that off before I do the photos but it looks like I might have been in a hurry or the or a matter of fact I did it and just like moving the stuff around basically put all those particles back on there so you know and you can use basically the eBay editor to kind of adjust the contrast and and even some of those little particles will go away if you do that so on this one of course we have the weight and uh, I use a jeweler's loop to look at the mint mark so if you have a jeweler's loop use it with your camera or if you have micro or macro lenses if you use a digital slr all these photos were taken with an iphone and if you just take your iphone and uh, put it up against a jeweler's loop you get these really great uh, magnification shots here and those are musts I, I might add for sure uh, to do this and so anyways there's some t there's some tips on how to how to do uh, photography i might actually make a photography video at some point I did ask the question if you guys want to see um, a video of my pho photography setup at the shop and if you do just leave a comment below and say that you want to see the photography video and how I have all my stuff set up and uh, we'll do a video on that uh, next up we have the Sh Sugar Ray Leonard leather Everless blue boxing glove as we can see here it's got some actual wear uh, boxing gloves aren't really made of the greatest material they tend to break down over the years as you can see this has got a breakdown and uh this one's to kathy best wishes 
Sugar Ray Leonard. Now I did, you know, I did of course my signature analysis and there was some tells in the signature that told me that this was an authentic one. And I will be doing a video on signatures at some point. So stay tuned for that. So if you're not subscribed, uh, definitely go down there, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. So when that video goes live, you'll be the one of the first ones to see it. Uh, I'm going to go over signatures, how to tell if a signature is authentic, or at least try to do your best job um, yourself in authenticating something before you take it to the next level. And basically also to determine who the signature is from, because that is the one of the hardest things in reselling is finding stuff that is signed and then trying to figure out who signed it. That's also another great thing. And I think that's going to be more of the point of the video that I make, not necessarily the auth authentication of the signature, which is very easy and anyone could really do it once you know some of the tips and tricks. But finding like who the signature is, especially if it's illegible, like a lot of football players have really horrible autographs and signatures. So uh, like I said, just look out for the stuff that's out there, you know. You might find a, a basket at a garage sale of just sporting goods and some of it might be signed and someone just doesn't care and it might be signed by uh, someone very well known in the sports industry or very famous. It could be something that's worth hundreds of dollars. So um, I, also, I also say this when you're looking uh, at baseball gloves, vintage baseball gloves at garage sales, look inside to see if they're signed on their outside too. And, and I'm not talking about like little Jimmy's name or something like that. I'm talking about some of those baseball players back in the 60s and the 50s and the 70s with sign baseball gloves with ballpoint pens so take another look at that uh next up we have this tag hoyer watch this sold for 300 dollars and this is a matter of fact uh had um, a little bit of signs of wear on the face but it still sold for 300 dollars. and tag hauer is a bolo brand for watches now in the watch community uh between the rolex people and the tag hauer people you know there's there's a lot of kind of some people don't like this brand some people like this brand so the community the watch community is pretty much split uh, and by the way I have a really cool um, Rolex video I'm gonna put it in a link above if you want to see how to determine if a Rolex is fake and how to open up the back of a Rolex to check uh, but this tag Hauer pretty cool piece and if we go do our first deep dive here on the what sold on eBay video uh, we can see some of them go for a crazy amount of money and I, I really honestly doubt you're going to find these, but you might find some of the lower end ones at garage sales and estate sales. Uh, these high end ones, I mean, you might find at an estate sale, but, you know, they're few and far between, but they're out there. This this is kind of just another kind of thing to put in your uh, collective mindset of things to look out for, especially watches. We see tons of watches at garage sales and estate sales. Just get familiar with the brands, get familiar with what, what, what quality looks like. And because there's tons of fakes out there. Now, I haven't looked up to see uh, Tag Hauer fakes, but I'm pretty sure they're out there. Just know if it's like, you know, looks like a deal is too good to be true. Uh, it probably is. So definitely just do your due diligence when searching for these watches. Some of them go for a crazy amount of money. And Tag Hauer. And I thought it was like Tag Hewer or Hauer, but it's like Hoyer. I think it's called Tag Hoyer. And so it's one of those things to look out for. Uh, next up, we have another boating book. This sold for $34.99. We had a video uh, the other day, uh, a what sold video, where I was kind of like stressing the fact that these kind of weird hardcover boating books go for a pretty crazy amount of money. And uh, during my research, I actually found some things that uh, might be interesting to you, the viewer, that you might have not thought of before. Uh, vintage log books, like, you know, Captain's Log, you know, like Star Trek or whatever, they actually, you know, have Captain's Logs and some of these World War II ones. Uh, World War One, uh, some other older ones actually go for a crazy amount of money. As we can see here, this is a PT boat log. As you can see here, it's just a note. And sometimes this stuff is just thrown, you know, in you know a basket of books at a garage sale, and you know you don't might not know what it is, but these log books are very, you know, they they're very familiar as far as what they look like, as far as like the paper. Uh, you'll be able to know, you know, just by looking at some of this kind of stuff what exactly it is and you know this one's not nice enough to has the PT uh, 146 as you can see right here 1945 and and let's take a little deep dive if you go to PT 40 146 which I, I think is the boat number and you look at that up uh, as you can see here this is a PT 46 nav source I mean just a just a simple Google simple uh, Google search will tell you 
uh, you know, exactly the PT number. This is a particular boat. As you can see here, it's launched was in 1942. And it shows you the, basically the history. So, I mean, there's lots of history stuff that can be found out through just doing a simple search. And sometimes, you know, for resellers, it's hard to figure out what the hell this is. But, you know, for me, who's dealt with military collectibles for a while, you know, if I saw this and I knew 1945, which is like the tail end of the war, you know, PT-146, thanks to my dad, who was a, a model maker all my life, I knew exactly what this would be too, and I would know how to look this particular boat up. This is a fascinating piece of history. Uh, there's all kinds of book, log books out there for boats, you know, different kind of army regiments, Navy, Air Force has log books. Just look out for this kind of stuff. It's something you've probably never heard of before, or maybe you have, but I'm just kind of, I, when I came across my research in boat books, I came across this and thought I would share it with, with everyone here on the channel because I thought like, you know, learning is power, learning is earning here on the channel. Uh, if you did enjoy this uh, program, definitely go down there, click the like button. If you stayed <laughs> all the way through, uh, I definitely appreciate that. And uh, we're going to consider doing some more videos more frequently, uh, but we'll see, you know, definitely go down there, uh, leave a comment if you want to see more videos every day, or if you're fine with the current rate of videos coming out. And uh, I know life is crazy. Not everyone has time to watch these videos, but I hope you learned something. If you did, definitely go down there and click the like button. Once again, I'm Chris the Thirst Shop Hustler. We'll see you next time. What she know about rocking the wolf on your noggin? What she knowin' about wearing a bird box skin? I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm searching right through that luggage. One man's trash, that's another man's